so glad you're here with Health Bites today. What we're doing with Health Bites is we're learning bite by bite from the Word of God concerning walking in divine life, walking in divine health. So we know that it's God's will to be free from sickness and disease. God wants you well. You have to establish that in your heart and mind. God wants you well. He wants you healed and whole from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. The Word of God says, by the stripes of Jesus, you were healed 2,000 years ago. You have to know that the same day he died for your sin, he died for the consequences of sin, one of which is sickness and disease. Good morning, everybody. So glad you joined me today. Listen, I'm so excited about these series of messages, which really started yesterday. And the title of this group of um, messages is, What Happens When Jesus Shows Up? And I'm going to start with our foundation scripture, and it's found in John 14, 12. You ought to have this memorized by now, but I'm going to read it to you anyway. I know you have it marked in your Bible. Jesus said, he that believes on me, the works that I do shall he do also. That means this is our assignment. This is our mandate. You and I have a mandate to do the works that Jesus did. This is in red. And greater works than these shall he do, or we can change that to shall we do, or you can change it in your Bible, shall I do, uh, because I... Jesus went to the Father. So here we can see uh, what happens when Jesus shows up. Well, miracles. Miracles happen. What happens when you show up? Are you a Debbie Downer? or Or are you full of the presence of God being exhibited in your life by your words, by your actions, or just by your demeanor? I'm telling you, the presence of God is in you. You bring the presence of God to every situation. And the more you're aware of this, the more you can operate being sensitive to the Spirit of God, doing what the Spirit of God tells you because you're connected. And that's why it's so important, as I've said before, to start each day surrendered, yielded, to the Father, yielded to the Spirit of God uh, operating through you. Father, I surrender to you today. Touch through me, heal through me, deliver through me. Um, uh, and, And make that profession out of your mouth because that's what you want. That's what we're here, just like John 14, 12, We're on an assignment. We have an assignment, not just to to come and get saved and then then that's it as far as what we do for the Lord until um, we're called home or until he comes and gets us, you know. You know, I really don't like that verbiage till we're called home. It's like he's standing there calling us home. Well, that doesn't happen. You know that. So I I don't have time to teach on that. But I just want you to know that that when, when Jesus walked into the room, the atmosphere changed because there were signs, there were wonders, there were miracles. Uh, Sickness had to leave. Death had to leave. Uh, Poverty had to go. And everything that is mentioned in the Word of God that is our benefit as a result of redemption is available to us. You know, John 10, 10 clearly is the dividing line of the whole um, Bible as far as I'm concerned. And it says there is a thief out there who comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, and these were the words of Jesus, he said, but I came that you might have life and life more abundantly. Well, that's abundant life, freedom from sickness, freedom from death, freedom from poverty, and freedom from lack. So you should have scriptures that you stand on, scriptures that you appropriate these promises into your life. 
Every single day you make those professions. And in 1 John 3, 8, what does it say? For this purpose was the Son of God manifest to destroy the works of the evil one. So Jesus had an assignment to destroy the works of the evil one, and he did that by reversing all the works that the enemy had done, the poverty, the sickness, the death, and and um, he, he just obliterated that. Well, we're learning, all of us are learning, everybody who's tuned in to the broadcast or we're watching it later, you have an assignment, and this is your assignment, to do the works of Jesus and then greater works. Now, we've discussed uh, some of the, the miracles before even uh, in our previous broadcast where we talked about that uh, before yesterday where we talked about, you know, Jesus raising the dead of the, the widow woman. We talked about that. We talked about that miracle. We talked about the man who had the palsy, who Jesus said, your sins are forgiven. But we're going to go back because we really haven't been able to finish the story about the the madman of Gadara. We, we got them over <laughs> the disciples and Jesus on the way. The enemy tried to stop them from um, even going to the, the, the area that the madman was in. But you see... What you have to understand that this wasn't just whim of Jesus, I'm going to go to the other side, guys. We're going to the area of the Gadarenes. No, this was a divine appointment. And I want you to realize, guys, that you are on assignment to be sensitive to the Spirit of God so that you too can be on div have divine appointments. That God didn't do anything randomly like he was he was instructed by the Father. That's why he spent so much time with the Father. But we we talked about how uh, in Mark 5, and turn over there in your Bible, because um, I want you to see this, and I may just paraphrase it because, you know, we've been on this this story about the madman of Gadara for, for yesterday and today, and I, I do really want to finish it today, but I'm telling you, there's so much truth in this. Like, we know that that in Mark 5, it's, it's talking about, um, you know, they just crossed the water, and um, Jesus got a little ticked off at the, um, the disciples for not not using their faith and having to get up off his pillow and be interrupted from his sleep um, and actually go ahead and calm the, the, the sea. But let's start with verse 1, and it says, And they came over into the other side of the sea in the country of the Gadarenes, well, we know that the disciples knew what was what was over there because um, it says that uh, that the people all around there were afraid of this man who lived in the tombs, who was always cutting himself, who was always breaking the the fetters and the chains that held him bound. He had supernatural power. Do you understand? Supernatural demonic. Power. So it wasn't just that he 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 was strong, but he had demonic power that um, caused him to break those chains and those fetters, as it's called in here. And uh, no man could tame him. He controlled that whole coastline, and he he controlled the whole economy. So that that is um, what it says. Let's go down to verse five instead of reading all of this. But let me tell you, it says, and always night and day, he was in the mountains, you know, the the area around the the water and in the tombs crying and cutting himself with stones. So this was a crazy man. Like he was totally, totally possessed. 
But look what it says in verse 6. But when he saw Jesus, now Jesus got off the boat. Jesus starts walking up to um, where he was. Because remember, this was a divine appointment. But when he saw Jesus afar off, like Jesus didn't even get close to him, but he ran and worshipped him. See, even though he was possessed by the enemy, he, he did something that was interesting, and that is he worshipped him. And then he cried with a loud voice. See, when you're possessed by a demon, which... Um, Probably most of you haven't been around someone who's been possessed like this. But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshiped him and cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou son of the most high God? I adjure you by God that thou torment me not. See, the devil knows whether you're possessed with with the Spirit of God and and are operating uh, in your dominion. Do you understand? And so they knew Jesus. And Jesus said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. So come out. You know, that was basically all that was said. But then he he asked him, What is your name? Now, Probably, I, I, don't, I don't find it in any other scripture where Jesus had a conversation with a demon. He, he normally just said, go, uh, I rebuke you, come out. Like, he gave the command. You know, we are told that we can bind, we can loose, we can speak the word to these demons, and they have to obey. That's why you can't, you can't let in fear. And that's what the enemy was trying to do. He was trying to get all these disciples in fear, which he did a pretty good job on the way over there. But uh, you can't operate in faith if you're in fear. And, of course, Jesus He didn't have any fear in him. He knew his authority. He knew what he was called to do. And it says, um, Come out from among them, thou unclean spirit. Uh, Jesus spoke to the, the, the madman. And then he said, What is your name? And he answered saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. Well, a Legion can be be 2,000 to to 6,000, really. Um, And so there were a lot of demons in this man. And I would suggest some people want to call him out name by name by name, but you never see that where he called him out. You spirit of this, you spirit of that, you spirit of that, come out. No, there's a proper way to rid um, somebody who's that possessed um, with, with demons, a proper way to get them out. Uh, And he besought him much that he would not send them away out of the country. So this is the madman speaking. Now there was nigh unto the mountains a great herd of swine feeding. So these are pigs. And you know Jews um, don't don't eat pork. And all the devils besought him saying, all the devils besought him saying, all the devils. So again, it confirms the fact that there was more than one. And all the devils besought him, saying, Send us into the swine that we may enter into them. And forthwith Jesus gave them leave, and the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine. And the herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea. There were about 2,000. So this clearly says that this man was possessed with 2,000 demons because they possessed those pigs. And they were choked in the sea. So they all died in the sea. Now, what you have to understand is whoever was in charge of these swine uh, came out. And, of course, they were ticked off um, because 
their their means of living was now at the bottom of the ocean or the sea rather and you have to understand that these swine if you study it out they were the 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 pigs that were being raised for the roman soldiers of course it wasn't being raised for the jews in that area because they didn't eat them but it says uh, Jesus gave them leave. In other words, he just said, go and get in the swine. That's what you wanted. So go get in those swine. And the herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea and they were choked in the sea. And they that fed the swine and uh, were told it in the city and in the country and they went out to see what it was that was done. They wanted to see what happened to their means of making money, their their living. And of course, um, they they were surprised, I guess, when they saw the fact that um, all their pigs, all their swine, had run over, uh, ran over the cliff, and were in the bottom of the sea. And they came to Jesus. These are the owners of the swine. I'm, I'm reading now at verse uh, 15. And uh, those that were possessed with the devil and had the legion, and they found those that man that was sitting at, um, at, at right there with Jesus. Uh, he had the devil, and now he doesn't have the devil. Uh, he was sitting and clothed and in his right mind, and they were all afraid. Let me tell you, this is what happens. You know, we're talking about what happens when Jesus shows up. Well, crazy people get set free. Do you understand that? People who are possessed by the enemy get set free. I've heard testimony after testimony about people who have gone into uh, these homes where where there are people who are all messed up in their mind and uh, and have been put away like behind uh, locked doors because they're um, a, a menace to society just like like this man was um, and and they got free free from the demons that were controlling them. Now, some way they had opened the door for those demons to come in. But nonetheless, look what happened to him. Look at the transformation. When Jesus gave the command, then those um, 2,000, probably close to that, uh, demons possessed those swine and ran down into the water. But look what happened to the man. Turn around, turn around like the the disciples did and saw that he was free. He was free. There's no telling how long he had been up in that whole area, controlling the economy, controlling the people. And then it says he was set free and and so he said to the people who came out who owned the swine, like, what, what is, is going on here? What happened to, to you? You used to be different. And they said, this is what he said. He told them how it befell him that was possessed with the devil and also concerning the swine. So he said, this is what happened to me. Look, I was possessed with with lots of evil spirits. I cut myself. I actually um, did did a lot of people harm because they would come out and try to, to bind me in chains. But uh, now look at me. Look at me. Basically, he's saying, and um, he was sitting and clothed so before, like he was naked running through the tombs, like really a wild man, totally possessed, and sitting there in his right mind, and they were just amazed. This was one of those, wow, <laughs> he's just sitting there calmly. He's not, he's not cutting himself. He's not running wild. 
and shouting and doing all kinds of things. And so then um, he, he had um, said, well, you know, get out of here. They began to pray him to depart out of their coast. And when he was coming to the ship, he that had been possessed with the devil prayed him that he might uh, be with him. So here Jesus, Jesus is, is taking this man or not really taking him. He has, he has set this man free. And what did this man want to do? Of course, he wanted to go be with Jesus. But Jesus suffered him not. You see, a lot of times we get around people who are, are evangelist or, or uh, a certain anointed men of God. In fact, I just want you to know that there are groupies that follow anointed men of God all around. But look what Jesus said to this man. Jesus suffered him not. In other words, look, um, you can't go with me. You can't go with me. See, a lot of people want to go and be close to an anointed man of God. They want to follow him wherever he or she goes, especially evangelists. And what we used to do is we used to call them groupies. Every time Brother Hagen would go to this place, they would be there, or this place, or that place. And, and there's nothing wrong with sitting under anointed men of God. But now, praise God, we have the ability to um, watch what you're watching now. YouTube, and we have the um, the the good fortune to have the anointing come into our very living room, come into our our car, so we don't have to be a groupie and follow these people all over the country and attend all their meetings. Uh, but it says Jesus suffered him not, and we're in verse nineteen. But saith unto him. And this was his assignment, like he got set free, but he had to heed the assignment that Jesus gave him. And he wanted to go with Jesus. He wanted to get in the ship. He wanted to get in the boat and go with Jesus. But Jesus said, no, this is what it says in the red. Go, go home to your friends and tell them the great things that the Lord hath done for thee and hath had compassion on thee. See, a lot of people want to go to someplace else instead of just kind of bloom where they're planted. In other words, go to your neighbor. You know, I've heard people say, well, if I, I really I really want to be a missionary to Africa. Well, if God hadn't called you to Africa, then you don't need to be going to Africa. You know, a lot of people like to go on mission trips all the time. Why? Because it's it's more exciting to go to another country, go to another place and minister rather than go next door <laughs> and minister to your neighbor. You know, and the thing about it is your neighbor's been watching you. So let's move on. They know what you're, what you're like. So, and, and in verse... Um, in verse 19, it says, and go and tell, go and tell. Isn't that just like Matthew uh, 28, 19 through 20 and Mark 16, where it says, go into your world. Like this is your assignment. This is your assignment. Unless God tells you to go to Africa, unless God tells you to be a missionary, your assignment is to go and tell. And that's what he says. Go and tell all the things that God has done for you. And um, and he departed and began to publish in the capitalist how great things Jesus had done for him. And all the men did marvel. In other words, he was a living example. He was the word manifest. He was a living proof what what Jesus can do. Well, 
We need to be those living proof. We need to go and tell. Like, you got to tell somebody, you got to tell somebody what Jesus had done for you. Now, maybe you didn't have 2,000 legions of demons on the inside of you, but, you know, we've all been changed by the power of God. Uh, first of all, by our salvation experience. Like, you should be a demonstration, just like this guy. He was a demonstration of the power of God, that he wasn't walking around in darkness. He wasn't, he wasn't, um, he wasn't doing weird stuff. Like, there should be a difference in the old you and the new you once you get saved. And that's a progressive thing. Like, guys, how have you changed since Jesus has has come into your life? Because it's not just uh, that you came out of spiritual darkness, but every day you should be growing, 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 changing, changing, changing. You shouldn't be the same person you are yesterday. See, the Bible says we go from faith to faith, victory to victory. So you can ask yourself, okay, what what am I doing differently that I didn't do yesterday? Like you should be better. You should be better in your verbiage. You should be better in your countenance. Like when you live your life focused on the fact that, oh, I, I'm experiencing Jesus. I'm experiencing the word in a new, new and different way. I'm making the adjustments that are necessary in my own life so that I can be bold. If if you're one of those people that is just uh, tied to uh, not telling anybody about Jesus, then you need to pray for holy boldness like the, the people in the book of Acts did, the early church. Give us boldness so that we can go and tell. Don't use the excuse, well, I'm just reserved or I'm, I'm just shy or I just, I just can't, can't, can't. No, that's not what the word says. Jesus said, you go. No excuses, really. No excuses. And if you listen to any of these broadcasts, broadcast from Dean Shropshire Ministries or Choose Life Church, you know that, you know, two-thirds of, of God's name is go, right? G-O, G-O-D, right? So we have an assignment. We have a divine assignment. Whether you've been uh, uh, delivered or whether you've been healed or whether you've just been saved, glory to God, uh, you have a story to tell. You have a story to tell to other people about what Jesus has done for you. So don't be shy. Don't be intimidated by your family or your friends. You go and tell. And we're going to discuss some more miracles tomorrow. I love you. See you then. Thank you for tuning into this broadcast. If you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, or if you would like to recommit, please pray this prayer after me. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for sending Jesus to die for me. And right now, I confess Jesus as my Lord. I believe in my heart that you raised him from the dead, and I thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name, Amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer with me, I want you to go to there'smorenow.com and click the I Just Got Saved tab. And we want to send you some information free that will help you in your journey. Partnering with DSM gives you an opportunity to invest into the kingdom of God and help people step into all that God has for them. The seed you sow in Dean Shropshire Ministries will produce a great harvest.
simple truth with Pastor D Money through Friday. The simple truth with Pastor D Money through Friday. Yeah, the simple truth with Pastor D Money through Friday. The simple truth with Pastor D Money through Friday. The simple truth with Pastor D Money through Friday. If you hear it, you should live and take a 